Where does this rail line go? Jericho's the last stop before it reaches. The cities. Without us, they're defenseless. And the cities are the perfect place to feed, right? It's always night there. So I can march my train full of vampires into the city, and they will be defenseless because there are no priests left. It's going to be a massacre. It's going to be a war. I was tired of seeing the same old Euro trash vampire over and over again. Very sexy, very cool, but not very scary. I want to get back something more like Nosferatu, something more like a creature. Vampires are definitely more monster-esque, you know, like a, a beast that happens to be in our world. They're a different species. They are much less human than us. They are more like aliens. They've evolved without eyes. They have extraordinary sense of hearing and smell. Um, and they're uh, quite dexterous. They move in really unpredictable ways and really, really, really fast. It's sort of based on a kind of bee colony, as it were. There are worker drone vampires and there are guardians who's a kind of super vampire. But there's a sense of a civilization there as well. <laughs> I love that about this film. I love that we were creating a whole new breed of something to be afraid of. What our vampires are like are scary, and they're creepy, and they're not something that anyone in their right mind would ever want to kiss. People have to use deep, deep imaginations. I mean, luckily all our actors are, are great at doing this, but it's always challenging when you're kind of like acting opposite nothing. You're kind of maybe off a little bit, and then um, director or somebody says, well, you know, he's right here. And you're like, oh, oh, right, of course. <laughs> a lot of times when you get into visual effects, um, as creative a job as it sounds like, it can be not really that creative in the sense that everything has already been designed and already shot, and you're just expanding on that. But when you get in these films that have all these cool ideas and concepts and really need to be expanded upon it, it's just, it's a great opportunity for us and we really like to dig in and do something incredible. I'm really looking forward to seeing how the train comes out because we only built the tiny part of it. I was really looking forward to building an enormous locomotive that was going to be 120 feet long and it was going to be 22 feet high, which we simply couldn't afford. So what we actually ended up building was three carriages that were pulled by a truck. We can actually have shots of motorcycles pulling up the train and people jumping on the train and seeing people on top of the train while it's actually moving. And then we do uh, what my favorite things is a mix of practical live action and CG where we see real train, but we're just extending it with a CG train. It was extraordinary fun. I mean, sometimes the train is moving and it was, uh, it was being pulled by a big truck and I was on a motorbike uh, alongside it and standing up, climbing up onto this motorbike and jumping onto the train. I guess we, we were doing like 40 miles an hour or something. It felt really, really fast and you're grabbing hold of the side and you're on a wire and everything. And I did think, what on earth am I doing. Okay, camera only. Good. There's a lot of wire work on this film. Honestly, I'm doing action and stunts on this that I've, that I've never done in any other film. It's lovely to do that sort of stuff, and you've got a bunch of mates that can make it look like flip and twist and almost fly through the air. And there's other reasons I became an actor, but I would be lying if I said that that wasn't one that needed to be fulfilled.